to me, competency is a very rare commodity. And commodity of competency dealing with any discipline, whether you're an English major, whether you're a philo guy, whether you're laying out bricks, or you're putting together a prospectus for buying a piece of land. The idea of core competency, the ability of being able to go ahead and do this job and do it right. And the idea of taking the pride in doing it right. Murray and I were talking about fundamentals. It's like I was a former musician. And one of the things I did when I studied at Berkeley in Boston was, how do you do your scales? How do you set up the basic premise when you're writing out harmony, when you're doing melody? When you're doing that kind of stuff of how do you construct a piece of music? There's a certain set of fundamentals that are required before you can do this. It's like driving a car. The great adage of, hey, the kid better know how to drive a car, but the kid doesn't have to know how the car is built in order to be competent in driving that machine. But the competency issue is consistent no matter what. It's the same way like being an artist. When you think about the various people who are artists, like Einstein was an artist. Why was he an artist? Really simple. He had the ability to ask the simple but essential question. The same way with Michelangelo saying, hey, my David was inside that stone, and all I did is I chipped away the extraneous pieces. So when we start looking at how we deal with this, when we start looking at education, and I agree with Marty completely, hey, you don't learn anything with success. If you turn on a computer and the thing works, or you write a, a sentence and it's absolutely wonderful, and the teacher absolutely loves it, wonderful. But if Johnny writes a sentence that's kind of like, yeah, and the teacher corrects him on it, you learn something. You learn something every time that you kind of make a mistake. And the question is, how do you encourage a person to keep going and not denigrate enough and say, oh, you blew it this way, blah, 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 blah. And I used the example of Einstein because in high school he was considered a doofus. He was considered a, a lout who did nothing. And then all of a sudden, when he worked in the patent office in 1905, he created two of the greatest scientific papers in the world in the space of a year. So it's the idea of like encouraging the ability to look at things differently. And when you look at technology, technology is an instrument that's going to amplify that because it's going to enable you to do stuff at an individual level. How do you encourage that? The idea of getting kids as partners. And I don't mean kids you know, like going in and taking control of the school and throwing bricks and doing stuff like that. But the idea of showing a raison d'etre as to why you need to learn this stuff. Give them the reason why, and then the kid jumps on it. More questions, please. Uh, the, before we get off yeah. of this one, yeah. uh, there's an interesting book. It came out about a year ago, but I was reminded of it again at this conference I was at. Uh, and it kind of plays into how things are different now than they were. Uh, if you haven't read it, I strongly recommend it, particularly for somebody in the education business. Uh, the author's name is Daniel Pink and the book is A Whole New Mind. And the, the core premise of the book is that in the past, we have rewarded, society in general, has rewarded what's generally called left brain thinking, and that's analytic thinking, that's deconstructive thinking. Uh, and his argument uh, is that as we move into the kind of world that Bob and I have been talking about, the skills which will increasingly be rewarded are more those that are generally associated with right brain thinking. They're synthetic, they're skills around communications and social relationships, they're about things like empathy, they're about pattern recognition rather than object deconstruction as a way of understanding things. Uh, and I think if you take that book seriously, you end up at a very different view of education than we're currently running. 